Hello and welcome to another episode of the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we are on the website of Amati Auctions which are based in the UK and we're going to have a look at their specialist sale which is running from the 18th to the 27th of January 2021. Now Amati usually do a few different types of auctions. They do the specialist one like we're looking at today which is kind of the higher end stuff. They also do affordable auctions which is kind of lower end or things that need repair and they also do um, auctions for uh, wood and other kind of trade supplies so if you're interested in kind of bidding on this auction and looking a bit more then I'll put a link in the description make sure to have a look at all of the different kind of sections and get yourself acquainted with it um, I can tell you that for this auction the buyer's premium is 22% so you'll have to add that to kind of uh, whatever you may or may not uh, purchase and then obviously shipping and things like that to be uh, added on top of that um, so without further ado um, we will have uh, a quick look at this auction so in this auction I believe we have I think about 141 items let's just quickly go to the end page and just see how many lots there are quickly scroll there yes 141 so if we go to the beginning page um, so we'll just see here some details here um, there you go 22% um buyer's fee um so yeah you can change the layout as per many of the other kind of uh, different uh, websites you can see the list or see a gallery but let's just kind of go to this click on the first one and just scroll through as we've been doing before so here we have a cello school of kennedy uh, london circa 1790 so that sounds uh, interesting Let's have a quick look. Um, I think usually uh, Amati have um, condition reports, but I think the ones for the cellos are not up for some reason. Um, one big thing about the Amati auctions is that they have this uh, 360 um, degree image viewer, so you can have a look at all of the uh, all around at least the uh, the body of the instrument. So that's really cool and I think that's unique to Armati I've not seen any others do it but you know this is very useful you can really see all the different things and then along with that you get kind of the fixed uh, pictures of the front and the back and also of the scroll I believe that they've started at least for some of the violins doing the front profile of the scroll as they didn't do that um, before I always find it's quite handy to see the the front of the scroll um, so yeah so we see here estimate uh three to five thousand usually as condition reports but not here at the moment they also give you the measurements so body length finger wall projection body stop neck stop so that's quite handy um shows you when it ends and also the current bid so someone's already interested in that so uh let's move on to the next one so a cello france circa 1890 uh so here we go not much uh, information there we'll just move on try not to go too crazy long with the uh, video today uh, a cello germany circa 1870 further labeled c routman in Braunschweig, 1892 the head earlier possibly english so labeled sanctus seraphin utensis Fesis venetis anno uh, 1500 to 2500 so we can have a quick look in the image viewer let's have a look at that and just have a look at the back and have a look at the scroll which they're saying it's not uh, original so it'd be good to have the condition report for that um you can ask them i think for condition reports if they're not there but usually they are listed uh cello circa 1900 i think we can move on past that uh, a 7 8 cello by alexis marlene mirko france circa 1840 sold with a certificate of jean jacques rampal paris 2019 so yeah uh, if you're buying an auction in france in paris then you'll often get certificates with things as is uh required by law so you get the rampal certificate so um yeah and it's branded and you get the measurements here um Oh, here we go there's uh, a copy of the certificate here so yep we can see that that's the certificate given uh no condition report there though but let's move on uh cello workshop of a schroter germany late 20th century 
Um, yep, we'll move on. Uh, cello probably by Nicholas Guineau, Miracle. Uh, two to four thousand estimate there. Let's have a further look at this one. They're all interesting, but I uh, don't think anyone wants to hear me talk rubbish for two hours. So it looks like it's got quite a few repairs you can see in there. Shame we don't have the condition report. Um, peg bushing there. And. Uh, cello Mir Court circa 1910, so I think we can move on past that. Cello by Marshall Youngman, Halifax, 1918. Let's have a look, there's some interesting things going on with the varnish there. Um, definitely some unpleasant uh, cracks there on the front, that doesn't look too uh, too promising. No bids on that so far. Very interesting what's happened to the varnish there and you see on the back. Hmm. What a kind of weird crackling and kind of bubbling there on the varnish. It's a bit strange. Uh, cello, Germany, late 19th century. So quite small, wasted. Yeah. Um, let's go on. Cello, Mittenwald. Circa 1890. So, a quick look at the back there. That doesn't look anything too super exciting. Um, the internet is a bit uh, slow today. Uh, a cello, possibly by a member of the Fent family, circa 1830. So, that looks quite interesting. Let's have a quick look on the, the viewer. So, you can see it's a big crack there. Probably lots more. We can't see. Quick look at the back, and then quick look at the scroll. Yep. Another cello school of Kennedy, circa seventeen ninety. This one doesn't quite look as appealing as the uh, other one. The estimate's a bit lower as well. That font is a yeah. Looks like it might have a nasty crack on the back there. Nevertheless, interesting, as we like to say. Uh, a three-quarter size cello mirror court, circa 1840. We can go past that one. Uh, cello mirror court, circa 1900. A viola by Roderick R. Ward, Cambridge, 2005. Yeah, Labelled Roderick R. Ward, number 74, Cambridge, 2005. Yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, looks like we've got a indication of the condition interesting purpling there yep interesting how here's a picture of the front of the scroll curious in a good state of preservation what i really like about the amati condition reports is you can't actually see them on this one uh we'll probably see it in the future ones but when they've got marks you see it's color uh coded you then they put the lines on which is quite handy it's better than the brompton's one which is just black and white but uh Let's kind of move on past this and see if we can find one which actually has some uh, measurements. So a viola, viola, a viola, a viola, <laughs> England, circa 1850. I can't speak today, it seems. Let's have a quick look at the uh, 360s. Not usually many violas in auctions or cellos these days. Anyway, it seems the uh, pandemics made it very difficult for people to kind of transport instruments or collect instruments for auctions. So things are a bit... Uh, yeah, a bit quiet on that front. That's an interesting scroll. Uh, let's have a look here. So there's no commentary, but closed crack. See, we've got a few here in yellow and also on the scroll. So, yeah, I do like these condition reports. Uh, once again, it's always worth viewing these in person if you can. Uh, very difficult at the moment, but definitely worth it if you can. Uh, a viola by Thomas Kennedy, London, circa 1820. So this should be interesting. It's got a high estimate there. Yep, six to eight sounds about right. It's quite figured on the back. I'm not sure it's uh, appealing to me, but uh, that's a picture of the scroll. And uh, there goes new wood, so it's had uh, 
a kind of patch on the side of the scroll. Let's see, let's move on. Uh, Viola by Valerio Prilico Cremona, 2000. Interesting. Sold with copies of insurance valuations by Florian Leonhard, London, 2008, and J.P. Givier, London, 2008. Mm, interesting. So that's been doing the rounds. And we've got a few documents here. It's not looking too much detail into this, but let's quickly look what we've got here. In a good state of preservation, no marks. There's the Givier uh, valuation, so that's a quite respected London shop and then Florian Leonard as well another <coughs> respected London shop uh, Viola by WH Van Schluen Scheveningen god that was absolutely terrible ignore me in there <laughs> 1977 I really will uh, learn how to pronounce things at some stage let's just have a very quick look at that These pictures of the front of the scroll just seem a little bit of a strange angle to me. Um, they look a bit strange, but maybe that's just me. Aviola, probably Germany, circa 2000. I think we can move past that. Aviola, probably by Georges de Roux, Mircourt, circa 1855. Let's have a quick look. Interesting. And there you go, new wood there on the scroll as well. And let's carry on. Uh, Viola, possibly France, circa 1910. I think we can go past this one. Uh, Viola by Pierre Le Juge, Mircourt, 1958. Also inscribed on the back beside his top block. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. And let's just see. Is there anything interesting in the condition report? No, in a good state of preservation. So, you know, these are the, this is a specialist auction. So things tend to be in a bit better condition than the, um, than the other auctions that uh, they do, the affordable ones. A viola by Enzo Barbieri, uh, Mantua, 1980. And let's have a quick look at that. It's a nice figuring there. Another good state of preservation. Ah, now we're on to bows. So, a silver mounted violin bow by W. E. Hill and Sons, London, made by Sydney Yeoman. Uh, sold with the receipt, sold with a wooden bow case. So, that's already a bid on that. Let's see. Um, let's have a quick look at this. And here. Yeah, it's a bit worn here at the top. I need some attention in the future. Uh, let's see here, there's a receipt from 1965. Yeah, £25. Interesting, if only that's uh, how much they cost now. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, let's have a look, condition report. Uh, in a very good state of preservation. Yeah, I guess so. I would just say that there's a bit of wear there to the top, just to watch out for that in the future let's have another uh violin bow by the Prechner, germany a well-known make us a quick look at the condition report another one in a good state of preservation just a quick look here okay uh nickel mounted violin bow by albert nuremberger i think we can move on uh, sold with copy receipt Dublin 1973 let's see how much that cost oh, one in a good state of preservation in 19 oh, that's odd hmm interesting the images don't uh, tally up there so English violin by Richards do, do, do. Oh, how interesting 18 pounds it seems for that very curious a nickel mounted violin bow workshop of francois picat mirecourt circa 1850 so i think this would probably do quite well 
Hmm, that's odd. Is that just the picture that's gone funny, or is something happened there to the head? I'll have to look at the condition report there. Let's just check. In a good state of preservation? Hmm, okay. Well, I think their image has gone funny there, which they should probably um, have a look at. So that is a bit strange. But moving on. A Silver Mountain Violin Bow by W. Hill and Sons. Another one by Sydney Yeoman. Let's have a quick look here. Yeah, once again, some odd distortion in the photos. Unless that is a repair. That's very, very strange. In a good state of preservation, yeah. So I think something's gone wrong there with their photographs. So probably worth... Send them a quick email, letting them know. Nickel mounted violin bow, France, circa 1900. Yeah, that same thing here again. Weird distortions on the photos there. I'm not sure why that is. Missing hair, yep. Yeah. Well, definitely, and that makes sense. Uh, actually, if you've got to say, um, that you have the measurements here so you can check the weight obviously essential total length as well very important so we'll go past this one uh violin bow workshop is your own thin reveal lamy yep okay uh silver mounted violin bow by marie louis piano leon circa 1920 let's have a quick look yeah that's fine that one but uh, some of the pictures some odd distortion, very strange. Looks like there's oh a Raffin certificate, so there's uh, some valuation there. In a good state of preservation. Let's see. Yeah, interesting, you click on the icons and it's... You get different uh, different images to what you're expecting, so that's strange. Uh, Nickel Mountain Violin Bow France, circa 1920. Um, yep, another nickel mounted violin bow school of Simon. We'll just go past that silver mounted violin bow France, nickel mounted violin bow school of Bazin France, silver mounted violin bow by Max Moller Amsterdam. Okay, silver mounted violin bow by Albert Nuremberger, silver mounted violin bow by Roger Millant Paris. Let's have a quick look at this. A silver mounted violin bow, possibly Claude Thomasin, France. Branded tub, so there's an example of kind of a bow with an incorrect, uh, or someone's tried to put a different uh, brand on it, uh, what it actually is. You see, that's quite uh, common. Some scratches to frog, small dent to adjuster. Okay. Silver mounted violin bow by R. Weichold. Silver mounted violin bow, probably by Claude Thomasin. A nickel mounted violin bow by Francois Lott. Another one with a Raffin certificate. Silver mounted viola, viola bow by Lothar Herman. Gold mounted viola bow by Garner Wilson London. Let's have a quick look at this. Most of these are in fairly good condition as you say this is the specialist one so kind of you expect that for the better stuff in a good state of preservation yep it looks that way gold mounted viola bow by percival wilford bryant interesting so, not sure how i feel about gold mounting on bows personally it's Seems a bit garish to me, but uh, I'm sure lots of people are very keen on that. Nickel mounted cello bow, workshop of Louis Morizot, Mircourt. A silver mounted cello bow by R. Weichold, Dresden. Three quarter cello bow. 
Oh, we're on to violins now. So a violin, probably by Leonard Russell, circa 1730, sold with bow and receipt from J and A Beer, London, 1963. So that's a curious one. Let's have a quick look at that. Let's just pull up. Oh, it's got a lion head. That's quite interesting. Let's have a look at the condition report. Lots of uh, closed cracks, but uh, and a little bit traces of worm there in the scroll. Um, yeah, you can see there you go. The uh, woodworm larvae had a bit of a feast on the the lion there. So forty five pounds in nineteen uh, sixty three. If you could only imagine. So looks like it might sell for two and a half, maybe more or something. So that's uh, quite an increase there from uh, forty five pounds. So that someone's uh, did well. Well, if you hang on to it for sixty years, I guess. A violin by Edwin Richards, London, 1879. Another one with a receipt of W.M. Hoffman, Dublin, 1973. I'm curious. I'm just interested in seeing these uh, receipts. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes. So here we go. This is actually the... That bow we saw earlier, it's the same same one. So this is the receipt for the violin and the bow. So that's curious, a bit of history. I quite like these receipts. A violin by Max Muller, Amsterdam, 1914. Let's quick look at the scroll. Let's carry on. Because we need to speed up. A uh, violin, Mere Court, circa 1910. Another quick look at the scroll. Oh, and the back. Let's see. A violin, France, circa 1900. I think we can move past that one. Uh, yeah, actually, some of them come. You see this sometimes that they're sold with a bow. Sometimes you have like a violin sold with another violin, or a bow sold with two other bows, or a violin with two bows. Blah blah blah, etc. etc. So it just means there's something else like not really that valuable that just comes along with it. So a violin by Malcolm F. Richmond Falkirk, 1926. Let's just have a quick look at this. Scroll shot. Good state of preservation, as we'd hope. Uh, Vine in Germany, circa 1900, labelled Steiner. Then we'll just quickly look at the scroll. Um, I mean, the condition reports on the affordable stuff, I think, are much more interesting because you see how horrific some of them are in condition wise, and it's a bit more exciting. These uh, condition reports are just. Uh, oh, the scroll's been. Uh, had lots of different tuners and funny things going on there. I wonder what the uh, condition report uh, says to that. Head bearing marks from an earlier repair, repairs to neck. And you can see some other cracks near the F hole and some new wood in various places. Uh, violin probably by P. Vrint and George Pine, London, 1882. Just have a quick look at the scroll. Okay. A violin workshop of Jerome. Thin Reveal Lamy, Mirecourt, 1910. A violin by Giuseppe Lepri, Santa Cangello, Forli, 1930. That's, uh, looks a bit different. Let's actually let's check that out on the viewer because it's quite dark and the edge is quite hard to see. Curious. Edge work seems quite interesting. Um, quick look at the front and the condition report. Small closed crack there. Not too bad. A violin, probably Germany, 1920. Let's just quickly just look at the scroll. A violin, probably made. Probably by a member of the Galliano family, Naples, 18th century. Later table, probably from the Hill Workshop. Sold with a copy of correspondence from Chenot. So that's quite interesting, historically. You can see there's lots of documents here. It's the front. It's the back. It's an interesting scroll. Table later. See a few closed cracks. Yep, so it's a few interesting documents here 
There's one from Chanel. Oh, very curious. Joseph Chanel. Yep, that's an interesting instrument. A violin, possibly Italy, circa 1890. Let's just have a quick look at the scroll. Just the font. And moving on. A violin by Jean Baptiste Collin, Mere Court, circa 1890. I actually saw one of these quite recently, and it was actually quite nice in person. Nicer than I kind of thought it would be, because they do look a little bit kind of tradey, but actually in person, yeah, it's quite a, quite a nice instrument. A violin journey, circa 1910. Let me just move past that. A violin from the Toyuka Custom Workshop, Yamaha, Japan, 2009. Violin was made for the vendor's husband and bought at Chuckles for 8,285 in 2009. Wow, that's uh, a lot. <laughs> I'm not quite sure it's going to make that amount, um, but we shall see. I don't know much about uh, the kind of the custom uh, Yamaha things, but it seems quite expensive but uh, we shall see I'll be interested to see what happens on that auction it's curious things a violin probably English circa 1890 let's quick look at the scroll there okay a violin Calson school France circa 1920 quick look at the scroll there and move on a uh, violin by Slavko Dmitrovic Zagreb, 2013. Interesting. Let's quick look at the measurements here. 355. Yeah, we haven't looked at many measurements, actually. I've been forgetful of that. Just uh, going through, looking at random things. That varnish is very bright, um, but interesting. Near perfect state of preservation. Well, there you go. If you want a perfect instrument from Zagreb, there's your opportunity. A violin made for Martin Swan Violins, 2014. So here we go. We talked a little bit briefly in the first episode about Martin Swan because we linked to his kind of auction guide. Um, I believe that all of these instruments he has made in Romania um, looks kind of tidy enough. I'm not sure how much they usually go for. Um, definitely sub a thousand pounds. So there's an opportunity there. So to pick up a violin labelled Martin Swan. Uh, violin, 19th century, Ferdinand Joseph Homolka in Gutenberg. Let's have a quick look. Okay. Let's see what the condition report says. Let's quick look at the viewer. Okay. And let's move on to the next one. A violin by Caspar Strenad, uh, Prague, 1824. That looks quite interesting. Quick look here at the scroll. Patch on back, under sound post, but no obvious crack visible. So that's interesting. Maybe it was starting to get a bit weak or they saw a very, very faint crack and put a, a patch in. A violin, 20th century. Carry on. A violin by George Pine, London, 1921. Quick look at the scroll. We'll just skip a few because uh, I think everyone will go crazy if we look at everyone. A violin, possibly Italy, circa 1900. There's a few additional images there. Interesting varnish. Let's quick look there close crack and let's move on a violin by Ferdinand Galliano Naples circa 1756 so very good that's uh, of the right of family a fine family of maker I think possibly not the finest of the family but uh, of the Gallio Galliano family nevertheless uh, certificate from Max Muller uh, work of Galliano except the table which is different um, uh, Amati believed that the back of ribs of Galliano, the head is probably German and tabled later. Let's quick look at the measurements. And estimate 15 to 25,000. 
let's have a quick look at this. Okay, and let's just have a look at the scroll. And then head and table, not original. So, well, you know, there's a opportunity there for someone to own at least a kind of Galliano composite for a reasonable amount of money. A violin by Wilhelm Paul Kuntz, Gra Gravenhagen, 1932. Let me just get rid of the scroll. Okay, I think we're going to have to speed up a bit. A violin probably by Joseph Soretta, Italy, 1955. Okay. A Baroque violin made for Martin Swan violins, 2014. So. There you go, it's probably uh, Romanian, I'd suspect. So, you know, maybe it's a way to get a, an entry Baroque instrument if you're looking to start Baroque. A violin, ge a, a, a ger Germany, circa 1910. Uh, violin, Germany, circa 1900. A violin, probably England, circa 1890, with a bow. A violin, Mirkor, circa 1900. A violin, probably Tyrol, circa 1850. This looks interesting. One bow labelled Battista Guadagnini in Placentia, anno 1760. Okay. That definitely looks curious. Let's see what the condition report says. So, wow, it's uh, had a lot of uh, closed uh, repairs there. So, it's... Uh, Yes, an interesting instrument, that one. I quite like that. Um, a violin workshop of Carlo Storioni, 1895. Have a look at the scroll. And a violin by Didier Nicholas N. Mirecourt, 1820. One bow. That's got quite a long body length, so you might struggle unless you've got really long arms there. Let's have a quick look and see what the condition report says. Good state of preservation. A violin, 20th century. Okay, just quick look at the scroll. Lot 90. I think we've got a uh, violin, Mia Corsica, 1910. We can go past that. A violin, possibly by Paul Sedert, France. We can go past that. Violin by James Brotherstone, Manchester, 1916. Let's have a quick look at this because I do like these English instruments. It's an interesting colour varnish. There's some repair to the scroll there. A violin by Jan Kondowski, Cremona, 1977. Made for Thomas Smith, Luthiers. Interesting back. Looks quite curious. Three quarter size violin. Violin by G. P. P. Love, Thornton in Craven, 1980. Okay, so kind of English instrument. That's a rather pale in colour. Violin, probably France, circa 1899. Violin Germany, circa 1890. Interesting scroll to that. That's quite curious though. Yeah, that is quite interesting indeed. A violin England, circa 1790. We believe the table was made for violin by J and A Beer in the 1960s. Scrolled also by another hand. Labelled ben, ben J Banks. Interesting. That's got the old uh, kind of block there. The block of uh, death. So it's had a button repair. Yeah, you can see there. Um, yeah. It's got traces of worm on the on the ribs 100 violin 20th century let's go past and we're on 101 three quarter size violin france violin by john ferber london circa 1830 this is let's quick look at the condition report varnish altered at head otherwise not too bad it's quite a narrow scroll 
Violin Mittwald, circa 1900. Let's quickly look at that. Okay. Let's move on. Another Mittwald violin, circa 1820, with the Klotz label. A violin possibly workshop of E. H. Roth, Germany, 1910. I think the Roth instruments are popular in, in the US, so I wonder if this might find a US home. Violin Mirkor, circa 1920. Violin by Anton J's Mittwald, circa 1810. Excellent. Yeah, I've seen uh, Jay's violin in person. They're quite nice. This has had definitely a few repairs. Yeah, some new wood here by the F holes. Lots of closed cracks but nevertheless a curious instrument a violin england circa 1900 let's just quickly look at the scroll there and a violin by Raphael Moncini Feno 1880 quick look at the scroll let's see violin germany 19th century a violin possibly carlo boldoni late 20th century Violin in Germany, early 19th century. Violin in Germany, circa 1900. Violin in Germany, circa 1900. Violin in Mirkort, circa 1910. A violin in Germany, circa 1890. A violin in Germany, circa 1900. Ah, now this is interesting. An original letter by Jean-Baptiste Villiome, Paris, 1863. Double-sided and mounted provenance from the collection of a private owner acquired approximately 20 years ago. Well, I mean, if this is... Genuine, I mean, that's very interesting for kind of collectors. Viome, like quite a prestigious maker and excellent copyist. And I think they say one of the kind of early people outside of Italy to really study the Stradivari instrument. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a really interesting bit of history if that is indeed genuine. Um, a frame collection of autographs. There you go, it's a few different uh, people there. Two frame prints. Hudibras and industry and idleness. So there you go. They even go into a bit of a bit of art. A dictionary of violin and bow makers, John Dilworth, definitely good. Monograph collection, see that quite a lot. Uh two indices books of mere court luthiers. That could be interesting. Lone exhibition of stringed instruments, you see that quite a lot. Uh La Casa Nizal, every time. Les Violons, yeah, it's quite common. W. E. Hilton, Sun Violin Makers, it must be quite an interesting book. Uh, the Tuscan and the Messi, Amadeus, yeah, Antonio Stradivari and his instruments. Universal Dictionary of Violin and Bow Makers, very useful, it's a good book, I have it. Uh, violin Makers, the Gunari family, yeah, that's quite an interesting, starting with 400 by the Hills. Andrea Armati and the Birth of the Violin. Violin Bridges. So this is a new um, book by Gerard Kilbride. It only came out, I think, like late last year. But it seems quite popular. If you're into violin bridges, then why not go for it? It's a book of about a thousand violin bridges, which I think accompanies the website that he has. So that's an interesting one for the specialist. Uh, Golden Age of Violin Making in Spain, which I think would be a really interesting book, actually. Quite like to look at that. Double Violin Case by Andrew W. Hill. Yep. Uh, a pedi violin case, a bam violin case, uh, another bam or oh, a bam viola case, an unbranded viola case, a 24 slot bow case. Nice. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. So it looks like we are at the end of the auction. So that was it, really. Just a quick kind of look over. Um, um, yeah. So usually I think there might be more items and maybe kind of more variation. Uh, as I said, because of the current situation, I think it's quite difficult for auction houses to get hold of stuff. But yeah, an interesting uh, auction and quite, uh, you know, yeah, an interesting array of uh, different things, I think. So I think my pick of uh, this particular auction uh, is going to be this violin by John Ferber, uh, London, circa 1830, uh, for no other reason really other than I really like kind of older English instruments and I'm interested in the Ferber family instruments and this one is in uh, fairly kind of good uh, condition and it seems quite uh, quite
quite interesting. Um, I was kind of torn between this and the Viome letter, which I find very uh, interesting, but I thought I should probably uh, best pick an instrument rather than uh, kind of a document. But uh, yeah, I think this is uh, an interesting instrument. Um, no real kind of uh, reason for picking it other than kind of just my own historical interest in the uh, in the English uh, instruments. But uh, yeah, that's going to be my pick of uh, this auction, I think. So I think that uh, pretty much wraps it up. Many thanks for tuning in to the Musical Instrument Investigator. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.